welcome to the Penguin Rundown. Zach Humphreys. And Pat Andrews. And it's been a while uh, since we've been here, but a lot to uh, go over with women's and men's basketball. We'll start with women's. They were at Valparaiso searching for their first road victory of the season. We'll pick it up here. Middlebrook's in the midst of firing a three ball, and it's nothing but nylon. Good start. Good start for the Penguins. First possession, three ball from Middlebrook's. has really improved her shooting. Not to be outdone, though. Betsy Adams for three for Valpo. And Adams, their best score. Brandy Brown, the Penguins' best scorer. And she's developed a little bit of an outside game as well. Yeah, there you see the dish from Nori, a little penetration kick out. And like you said, Brandy Brown really developing her game into an inside-outside threat. Boki Dimitrov hard to the hole around a couple defenders, lays it up and in, and the Penguins enjoying a good start out 16 to 3 right now. You get that huge lead, especially on the road. You love to get out to that fast start on the road, because usually on the road you expect a home team to make a run at any point. And you know, Valpo did make a run. Fortunately, YC had that big lead, they were able to hang on for their first road victory in three years for the Penguins. They take this one 61 to 54, shooting 37% from the field. Valpo shooting 36%. Zach, why don't you uh, give us that Brandy Brown stat for us? Yeah, that is not a typo. Brandy Brown had 29 points, 18 rebounds on that one. Middlebrooks, as we've been saying, her shooting has progressively getting better. 13 points, 5 rebounds. Dimitrov also added 11. Right wing. And now we'll pick it up Nordy. from the Beely Nordy. Center where the Penguins were hosting Wright State. Nordy after the good start, little runner in the lane. Yeah, we see that from Nordy. And then, like we said last game, Middlebrooks really stepping up her game from the outside as she knocks down this triple from the men's three-point arc yeah, there in the Beagley NBA Center. range out there. She's pushing it. Brandy, she can also fire the three ball on the right wing. That one a women's triple, but nonetheless still worth three points. Yes, sir. And we see LaShawna Thomas, big score for Wright State, unable to hit there. Putback was good. Wright State on the comeback. They were trailed by three at that point. And here's Davis again. Hard little cradle move to the bucket. Yes. Puts it up and in with the right. Thomas with her Allen Iverson impression there. A little scoop shot over her head. And here she is again. Even when she's not scoring, creating the offense as she hits Mariah Bennett for the triple in the corner to pull right state within one. And then here's uh, Kobe. Uh, no, um, excuse me. That's Lashana Thomas again on the baseline. Fall away. What a shot. And she puts together her own little highlight video here towards the end of this one. But... You know, Brandy Brown, not to be outdone, the leading scorer for the Penguins on the season, ties this one up at 59. And back comes Thomas, however, here again, guarded heavily. A little shake and bake right there off the dribble. That's unstoppable. And, uh, with that quick step of hers, once she gets past you, she can basically go to the hoop or pull up at will. So one final chance, down three, trying to get a shooter open. Nobody's there. Macy Nordy going to have to fire something up. Desperation wasn't there. And kind of play developed a little late, unfortunately. Wright State pulls this one out 64 61. Wright State shot 53%. The fact that they only lost by three after letting a team shoot that high of a percentage is still maybe something to hang your hat on. Brandy Brown, 23 points, eight rebounds. Middlebrooks again, double digit scoring with 14 points, and Tierra Jones with nine points and five rebounds. And here we are, YSU. Taking on Detroit now, as we see Detroit likes to get out and run. There's a steal and the finish from Dominique Dixon, giving the Detroit an early seven-point lead. And the point guard who torched the Penguins last season, Jaleesa Jones, not an outside shooter, but had a look there and took it. Give her enough space. You know, anyone can hit it for, when you give them that much room. Denisha Franbo makes a living out there, drills the triple there, and Detroit off to the good start up six. Why so you get a little momentum here though at the end of the first half. Brandy Brown with the runner at the buzzer to cut the lead to five. It was a good momentum change for the Penguins. They came out in the second half and really stuck it close with Detroit all the way through. But here we see coming out of the second half on the break again, pushing it for Detroit. There's a nice little easy layup on the break. Middlebrooks, she could do a little bit of that as well for the Penguins. Got a little bit of speed all the way to the rack with the right hand. Yeah, a little coast to coast for Kenya keeping the Penguins in this game late and she can do it from the outside too as we've seen from these past couple highlights hitting the triple for the penguins pulls them within one and charity thornton the center usually makes a living down on the block not this time she was left all alone this is an nba 3-2 drills it yeah, that's one of those situations if the other team center can hit it from deep more power to them that's a shot you'll give them usually and then the west virginia transfer dominique dixon they've enjoyed her presence this season she's their leading scorer knocks down the triple and brandy brown she could fire it from out there, too, really broadening her offensive game, Pat. Yeah, the, the way she's just transformed, I don't want to say call her an outside shooter, but to be able to knock that down really opens up your game as a, 
all-around player. But in the end, Detroit was just too much to handle down the stretch. 66-57 was your final. Again, YSU a little bit low shooting percentage at 37%. Detroit much better one at 47%. Brandy Brown had a double-double, which is uh, starting to become something we see every night, night in, night out for her. 18 points and 10 rebounds. Now let's take a look at the Women's Horizon League standings. As you can see, Green Bay... 18 and 1. They are nationally ranked still. I think right now at 18th, the new standings come out today. We can check that out online. Butler at 13 and 6, 7 and 0 as well. Wright State 12 and 6. Cleveland State 11 and 8. Detroit, UIC, Milwaukee all bunched up in there in the conference at 3 and 4, as you can see. Loyola, Valparaiso, and the Penguins at the bottom. As you can see, they're not you know, they're at the bottom, but they're not too far out you know, from the middle of the pack, so they can you know, get on a little run here and really improve their seeding when the Horizon League tournament comes around. A lot of tough games they've played this season, too. A lot of close games, and unlike uh, last year where a lot of blowouts occurred for the Penguins. So definitely things looking up for Coach Bolden and the uh, women's basketball team. And you see they're looking up for the women's team. Let's see how the men's team did over our winter break. They had a tough first game at the national runners-up last year. That's Butler. There they are at Hinkle Fieldhouse. There's Matt Howard finishing up for Butler, giving them an early two-point lead. For the Penguins, it's Kendrick Perry out on the break. Usually, the guy does some things on the opposite end, shot block, and this time goes way up top with a two-handed flush, does Urgle. Yeah, Urgle, one of the most athletic big men in the country, nationally ranked in blocks per game with three for the Penguins. This is Vetus to Perry to Ash and a splash. He hits that all the time. You leave him open on the left wing. Yeah, nice ball movement from the Penguins. Made 14 threes during this game. You'll see a good amount of them you know, during this highlight that really kept a minute. Although Butler has some shooters of their own. Here's Shelvin Mack, one of the best players in the country, hitting the triple at the end of the first half for a four-point halftime lead for the Bulldogs. Like you said, Penguins had 14 of those triples. We'll see a couple more in the second half of these highlights. First, again, it was Ashton Ward coming off that screen. Nice little job to free himself, get open, and knock down the open look. Yeah, nice uh, you know, screen at the top of the key by Ergel to really give him, I mean, that was a wide open three. I might have been able to make that one. This one, just good defense, better offense if you ask me. Watch Deshaun Brooks. He's way outside. You don't even think he's going to pull up, but he does. You're kind of one of those situations where you're not necessarily open, but you're kind of in rhythm while you're catching the ball, and you feel comfortable coming off that pick and catching and shooting right away. And this guy down low just really torched the Penguins. Howard, little spin move up and around over Bowdler. Yeah, Howard, they really had no answer for him. He's real physical down low, can finish from anywhere inside eight, five, about 15 feet. This one a very high scoring game, but again, Butler pounding that post. This one is Veasley and the foul on Shinaki. You know, it would have been real easy for you know Butler to run away with that. That puts them up six, but YSU not gonna go away, even on the road. Hanging around with one of the top teams in the country. As you can see, this Ashen Ward three ball would give the Penguins a two-point lead, just about four minutes to play. Could they hang on? That's the question. Back come the Bulldogs, however. Shelvin Mack making a living doing this, doesn't and he? You can't give him that much space dribbling up the court. You have to pick him up at half court, or you risk exactly what just happened. He can pull up from anywhere. And now it's Devontae Maiman on the hard bounce. That's a quick move for Devontae, and one. Drawing the, you know, that iffy, iffy call, could have been a charge, could have been a block. The refs call the block, a little break for the Penguins, puts them up by two late in the game. This is a big point in the ball game, all tied up. The drive going up, great defense, it was missed, but it was put back by Howard eventually, and eventually the Butler Bulldogs, they know how to win in those close games. So they've been in a lot of those situations in the NCAA tournament last year, a lot of games this year as well. They go on 84 to 79. Good shooting performance though for the Penguins, 48%. Butler, of course, had to do it a little bit better. They go 49%. Blake Allen, a career night, 17 points and six assists. Devontae Maiman was perfect for beyond the arc, three of three. The Penguins are back home for a little, this is the second half of that doubleheader of the women's game against Wright State as the men also take on Wright State as well. Another tough Horizon League game, Wright State makes a tournament every couple years usually up there with Butler challenging for that Horizon League tournament title. Here's Troy Tabler to the hoop for an early lead for Wright State. Deshaun Brooks down the middle, good little dish by the freshman KP3 finding him and back comes Wright State however, they stolen though, Penguins out and running. The beautiful dish, Maiman, KP3 soaring over the defender for the deuce. And Solskis, look at this one, almost sitting on the Wright State bench just says, heck I'll chuck it up there. The Penguins really shot the ball well in this one as they're up four. Up leads up to nine right now. 
as Cole Darling makes a darling of that layup. <laughs> you had to do that, didn't you? Penguins come back with it. Shanaki, probably not the beautiful post move, but it went in. That's all we could say. Shanaki fought it up and in. Probably wanted it's, a foul call, but nonetheless, it's two points. It's just a way, uh, you know, example of willing it in. Like you said, not the best move, but sometimes you put it up there, you never know if it'll drop in there. That was Trey Brewer off the bounce, putting it up and in. Bright State, here comes Tabler again off the dribble. Nice little fancy move there to put it up off the glass. It's a close one again. A lot of close games from the Beagley Center. Devontae Maiman had a great look to tie it at the end of regulation. Missed it, and the Penguins would eventually run out of time in this one. Wright State 66, Youngstown State 62. YSU shot 41%, Wright State. How did they get the victory shooting 32%? Well, YSU went 9 of 18 from the free throw line this game. 50% uh, usually doesn't get it done from the free throw line at this level. Ashton Ward with 12.7 rebounds. Maiman kicks in with 12 and Solskis with 11 points and 9 rebounds. And now the last highlight is Detroit. Another team, much like the women's team, love to get out and run. And how about this? Blake way up top with a right-handed slam. Yeah, design play, nice back screen set up for Detroit for the one-handed alley-oop slam. And here's Chase Simon from the right corner, knocks it down, gives Detroit an early 10-point lead. Why is he not gonna go away, though? I'm gonna say, they're fighting back, and don't let this guy get loose for a deuce. Kendrick Perry tied things up at 33. And here you see another highlight of this one. Ball gets knocked out, he just, you know, on top of it, beats everyone to the ball. No one's gonna catch him as the freshman skies up. That's a great look. A kid can jump out of Ocoee, Florida. Number three is going to be a good one for many years to come. Simon says, I need a layup instead of the triple. He goes inside this time. We've seen him outside. Can get inside as well. Another person that can do it inside outside is Solskis with the pretty move to the hoop for the Penguins, giving them a five-point lead early in the second half. The feather and Lithuanian thing roll, as I like to say. I don't have a comment. There's on Ashen <laughs> Ward on the easy deuce. I knew I'd get you on that one. Ashen had another good ball game. Here's Blake Allen, the spot up triple from that right hash. And here we'll see Eli Holman. Well, no, first there's a nice penetration kick for a lap. Here's Holman. Putting, That's a mismatch. Uh, yeah, that is definitely a mismatch. Putting. Who was that? Ashen, was that Al Ward. Ashen Ward puts him on a poster real quick. That is now Mr. Holman's screensaver. <laughs> Wysu not going away though. KP3 from deep pulls the Penguins to within one. They get the timeout. They're going to have a chance to tie or maybe even win this one after Detroit can only make one free throw on the other side after the foul. And here's the look they get. Devontae kicks it over to Allen. That'll win it. It was short as it was partially blocked by the 6'10 Holman. As I remember, I was sitting right on the Detroit side and Holman came over to his coach and said, I got a piece of that coach, and he sure did. As the Penguins end up Falling to Detroit, 73-69. YSU, 39% from the field, 67 shot attempts. That is a lot. That's called a hit in the glass. Unfortunately, not able to convert all those into points. Detroit with 40, 43% shooting. Allen, 15 points, 6 assists. Solskis also adds 15. And KP3 with 13 points for the Penguins. And now we'll take a look at the men's conference standings. Cleveland State and Valpo, surprisingly, up top on Butler. Both of them are at 7-2 and two in the conference. Butler, you know they're going to be up there at 6-3, and three, tied with Wright State. Detroit at 11-10 overall and 5-4, and four, tied with Green Bay. Milwaukee at 5-5. Five and five. Loyola at 3-6. and six. Youngstown State at 1-8, and eight, but just like the women, a lot of close games. It's really hard to... I was going to say, I mean, this just seems like football season all over again. One and eight in the conference, and very easily, you know, those numbers could be flipped around or close to it. And when you look, beautiful thing about basketball is you get that Horizon League tournament at the end of the year. So all you got to do is get hot at the right time. We've seen them hang. They lost to Butler by five. Butler was mm -hmm. in the national championship game last year. So they can definitely hang with the teams in this conference. Just, you know, eventually you got to start pulling them out. Very true. Let's take a look at what's coming up next week here on the Penguin Rundown. Men's basketball will be at Loyola on January 27th. That's an 8 o'clock start due to the time change. January 28th, a 5 o'clock swimming and diving right here at, or excuse me, at UIC. January 29th, a 12 p.m. swimming and diving meet will be at Green Bay. Illinois State also will be there. And women's basketball has one game this week that will be on the 29th, a 1.05 p.m. tip here at the Beagley Center against Cleveland State. And also on the 29th at 4 p.m., men's basketball will be at UIC, who they beat here at the Beagley Center in their last meeting. 
Remember to follow YSU Athletics on the web at www.ysusports.com, facebook.com slash YSU Sports, and on Twitter at YSU Sports. That'll do it for us, Zach Humphreys and Pat Andrews. We'll see you next time on the Penguin Rundown.